everyone, Paul Zarling here. Hope you're doing great. Thank you for joining our presentation today. What are the hackers, scammers, fraudsters, and crooks up to now? We're gonna provide the latest intelligence on identity and security and consumer privacy. This is a video YouTube of a live presentation that was given in the middle of February of 2019. It's for our clients and we're big believers in financial education. And I've given this presentation uh, three years in a row now uh, and there's new stuff every time. And so uh, what you're gonna find out today is uh, some things around some proactive tools and some reactive tools that you can use to deter against uh, crooks and fraudsters, but also when it happens, um, what you can do immediately. So a little bit about your speaker, you may be wondering who this is. I'm the managing partner of Client First Tax and Wealth Advisors, we're an independent fiduciary in Wisconsin uh, with our own active uh, investment management system called the Adapt Investment Management System. So a little bit about me, 20 years experience in business, um, I've been all over the world with public and private companies. Um, I've fought counterfeiters. I've been involved in Powercom and defense industries and healthcare. And I have a MBA in finance from Marquette University. So if any of you want to try Marquette basketball, we've got a good team this year, both men's and ladies. So looking forward to what things come together for them in March. So when you think of identity security and consumer privacy, uh, there's my family. I've got seven kids with uh, my beautiful wife. And if you think about it, you have 15 elements of your personal information that hackers are trying to get at. Uh, maybe it's your date of birth, maybe it's your address, et cetera. I'm gonna show you what those all are, but for us as a family, there's nine of us. Uh, and so there's a lot to think about, whether you're in college, whether you're in high school, grade school, or even not even in school, um, there's pieces of information that they wanna to use to, uh, to either get money or crime or forward on to uh, a crime ring um, you really got to be on your toes for all these things. So this is why you're doing it. You're doing it for your family, those you love, and making sure things are stay safe. So what we're going to cover today is I'm going to cover the top 10 scams targeting your information. I'm going to cover nine real-life case headlines to learn from that are specifically from Wisconsin for those and our clients. Now we do have clients in Arizona, Florida, Tennessee, and, and around the U.S., but I focus on uh, Wisconsin headlines. We've got two new important regulations you need to about, know about. One is across the Atlantic and one is here in the States. Three new areas to keep your eyes and ears aware of this year. I think a lot of people think of uh, identity theft as maybe like an email hack or a fish, phishing uh, scheme, uh, but there's uh, some new things to be aware of as you uh, go into 2019. And I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks to outwit the nitwit, so tools for your toolbox, like I said, if you get anything out of today, you can have a, a set of proactive tools and a set of reactive tools. And uh, also have a PDF tool that uh, of that if you want uh, that after the presentation. All right, so if you think about hacks uh, being increasingly vulnerable, it was a rough year for 2018. For those of you that are Marriott Rewards, now called Bonvoy, 500 million accounts were hacked. A lot of people remember Equifax, Twitter was 330 million. Uh, Facebook had a rough year, both in being hacked, but then also in selling people's information you weren't aware of. Uh, and it's only going to get worse as um, as hackers get get better at it and and, and really want to get after your information because they can create credit cards, they can create, they can get after your cash, um, do a ton of things, order order things in your name, all the things which aren't beneficial to you but beneficial to them. So 2018 was was really rough. Uh, and if you think of it on like a, a line graph from left to right, um, hacks have only gotten exponentially more in the last five years. So to me, it's actually a matter of when something you're involved in gets hacked versus if. And so that's why I'm, I had to create a proactive tool set for you. Then we move on to 2019, it starts off explosive. Uh, for those uh, that are clients know this, because I had an email about it in January, but there was a collection number one, which is the monster breach that had 772, almost 773 million unique emails and 20, over 21 million unique passwords. Potentially more on the way. There's rumors that there's maybe collections, you know, two through five. We'll see uh, where that's at. But all the same, whether this is new or old information, the fact if it's old information, they can actually use it and uh, being intimidating with uh, an email to you saying we've got your account and, and try to exploit you. Or if it's fresh, that all the all the more reason to be frequent in changing your passcode. 
So that's how 2018 and 19 were. And the 15 pieces of information that they want, if you remember the, the, the picture of my family or even your family, if, if you picture that, those you love, um, they're going after your name, your address, your phone number, your date of birth, social security number, passport, passport number, credit card number, bank account number, email account and password history, insurance accounts, employment history, education history, social media accounts, and driver's license. And they could be trying to do a one-for-one -one theft, which is they get everything and create a whole new person that's exactly you. Or they could do something that's called synthetic identity creation, which they take your name, maybe a neighbor's date of birth, a friend's yeah, address, one of the 15, and they make a combination and create a synthetic person. So it's not a matter of if, but when, and how you handle uh, when you get hacked. And uh, with our clientele, we've had people that have had um, their identity stolen, so we've, we've helped them solve that. And so that's why we're a big believer in providing tools for all of you so uh, you can deter identity theft and when it does happen, how to quickly fix it. So that's uh, why we're big believers in, in this information. So you can also see a map below there, a little fun. It's called threatmap.bitdefender.com. If you want to see actually live uh, threats that are happening, give you a, a sample of what's all going on. It never stops and it happens around the clock. So the big takeaway for this uh, presentation is keeping your information safe, how to do that, and then how to react when it, when it happens, when it is compromised. And they're doing it to get after your information in a couple different ways. So these are the latest scams, right? You've got phone scams, which try to trick you out of your money or your personal information. So I've actually kept a couple on my own phone. Uh, these are kind of funny. Uh, let me pull a couple up here. Uh, this last one happened not too long ago. So one second here, let me play it for you. Here we go. Should it expired after that you will be taken under custody by the local cops as there are four serious allegations pressed on your name at this moment. We would request you to get back to us so that we can discuss about this case before taking any legal action against you. The number to reach us is 818. All right, so get, that gives you a flavor for, for one of them. So kind of an intimidating one or meant to be intimidating one. I found it a little funny just because, you know, it's a robocall and uh, a local cop, so four serious allegations on me. So that happened, and then I had the same one happen, and maybe this has happened to you, where it was the same robocall, but they rotated numbers. So it started out in California, then went to Indiana, then went to California, then Tennessee, then New Jersey, um, et cetera. So let me find this one for you. This was a, a little funny. Hold on one second. Here we go. Oh, just lost it. Here we go. SSA back is 330-303-4259. The reason you have received this phone call from our department is to inform you that there's a legal enforcement action filed on your social security number for fraudulent activities so before. This matter goes to the state courthouse and before you get arrested if you need any information or have any question, kindly call us back at 330 all right, so you get the point there. They're trying to go after my social security number. They, they give me a fake one and then say, it's going to go to score, courthouse, I'm going to be arrested. Another intimidating one. I actually had one that, that said my social security number is going to expire. And for those of our clients, you know, when we educate you, your social security number doesn't expire. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that. So, okay, those are a couple examples of phone scams. The next one is email phishing. Uh, these are older but goodies. Still, people still go after this stuff. Uh, it's been around for as long as emails have been around and people still fall for it, so be careful of that. Uh, bank scams involving overpayment or verification. Uh, debt collectors for debts you don't even have, and I'll really try to intimidate you on that. Fake government officials this time of year, particularly in tax season, you know, from the end of January through the middle of April. Uh, IRS imposters. Uh, our clients know the IRS never calls you. They always start with a letter. Uh, that's for most government officials, so keep that in mind when you start getting phone calls. Charity scams happen, particularly after tragedies. Could be the wildfires in California, could be uh, flooding along the Mississippi, could be a hurricane uh, in the Gulf region uh, for the U.S. So 
keep in mind for charity scams, ticket scams. This is particularly around sporting or, or entertainment events, so whether it's uh, as big as the Super Bowl or, or the World Series or even something local for your NBA team or your NFL team, uh, those, those areas are, are big. Uh, lottery and sweepstake, where you try to in, uh, imitate the state lottery system. So price scammers out there. Tax identity theft is, is a big one. We've already talked about that with the IRS imposters, um, where people grab your Social Security number, file a, a tax return, before you, and so when you file yours, you can't file saying, hey, by the way, this social security is a number is already associated with a, a return that I already got a refund. So uh, be careful with that. Census fraud, no, census happens every 10 years. These are bad actors going out after, and trying to find information and survey to get information from you. So remember, government officials don't start with a phone call, they start with a letter. And then the bonus, is romance scams. This is where people are looking for love and, and sometimes they find it in the wrong places. And interestingly enough, this is costing uh, Americans $143 million uh, with romance scams. So that averages about $2,600 a person. So if, if you're looking for love, uh, make sure you're finding it in the right, in the right places and be careful of, of fraudsters or people that are kind of prey on your emotions. So thinking of all those things, those are the scams. Uh, we've covered those, and here are some cases uh, ripped from the Wisconsin headlines, and this is from the U.S. Attorney General's office. Uh, the first one is a Madison man gets two years for identity theft. What he did here is he actually stole an eBay account, uh, advertised a trailer for sale for $17,000, uh, had the $17,000 wired to him, and there was no trailer delivered. So the person that, was, that had paid for everything went after the account, uh, person and is like this isn't me and ultimately found out who ripped it off it was a 60 year old Madison man and they uh, accused him of, uh, of identity theft and getting two years for that second one is a Milwaukee woman convicted of prescription fraud and aggravated identity theft she essentially ripped off a, a pharmacist's um, identity and started uh, writing fake prescription uh, for oxycodone and then looking to sell that uh, on the uh, uh, not the on the undercover market. Um, so that was an aggravated identity theft against a pharmacist where she got that and then the prescription fraud was the laws against her actions there. This one was really interesting. An 18 year old arrested in Oshkosh gets 58 months for counterfeit debit cards and ATM skimming. They caught him in Oshkosh but his ring actually was also in Kansas City, Nashville, Tennessee and Atlanta. And what he was doing is he would set up a skimmer and a pinhole uh, camera to get your PIN number when you went to go get to use your credit card or your ATM and he would circle back around every so often and collect and then use that money and spend it in another city. Uh, they just happened to catch him in Oshkosh. Now the interesting thing is normally 18 year olds aren't the mastermind of anything of everything and so he was actually part of a syndicate uh, where he was getting 25 percent maybe it was 30 percent of the cut um, and so at the time they knew uh, over hundred thousand dollars was in play here. Green Bay resident guilty of wire fraud, filing false tax returns, aggravated identity theft. Uh, this one's similar to Mequon resident guilty of wire fraud, filing false tax returns, aggravated identity theft. In essence, these are uh, people doing your taxes and, and doing it fraudulently where they give you one return, file a different one with the IRS, um, take the refund, give you the correct amount as the client, and then keep the difference in another bank account. So they're using your identity to actually defraud the government. So the Green Bay resident was a female, and $300,000 were in play on that case, and Mequon was a male, and $800,000 was in play for that case. The sixth one is a Florida man gets 48 months for Green Bay Area gas pump skimming scam. This was a little bit different than the 18-year-old. Uh, this person, he actually would be nearby the gas pump and had a skimmer, and that person would actually Bluetooth to his laptop, and he would recreate or uh, debit card or your credit card. Number seven is three Florida residents use stolen IDs to make unauthorized ATM withdrawals throughout southeastern Wisconsin. These are guys that just got a hold of, of your, your identity or your information and were just taking cash out and they could confirm uh, about $125,000 in cash, but they realized there's probably much, much more that they couldn't get their hands on. 
So, uh, but still, one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars is, is a lot for for three guys just to run around and uh, you know hit up the ATM machines. This one tugs at the heartstrings a little bit. A uh, husband and wife were arrested in Greenfield. They get thirty months for impersonation scheme involving seven hundred eighty victims over one million dollars. What was happening is they set up robocalls to go after uh, a certain type of nationality and saying if you don't pay this fee, your passport will be revoked or your visa will be revoked. Uh, very uh, much using intimidation tactics. They created almost a false looking uh, federal department, kind of combining Homeland Security and ICE and, um, you know, defrauded people out of a million, a million dollars and a lot of emotional heartache. Number nine, a Missouri couple arrested in Monona get 48 months for identity theft and nationwide check fraud scheme. They were caught, yeah, in Monona, but they'd also done it in, in Kansas City as well. Essentially, they were grabbing checks and cashing them at a Walmart and then uh, rotating around all the Walmarts, and Walmart was, was on to them and caught them in, in Monona. So $600,000 was at play with this case. And then a bonus for you, a Florida man arrested in Austin gets 46 months for counterfeit credit cards. Uh, when they caught him, it's, it's, he had about 1,600, 1,600 um, credit card numbers um, in one of his uh, jump drives. So, you know, this stuff's out there, and this is why I tell you, when you have all these pieces of information, you know, 1 through 15, they're trying to get something so they can go after and, and, and do something to, to get some type of money, whether it's your credit card, your, your identity, uh, gas pump skimming, something with your taxes, a fake e eBay account, you know, the list goes on and on, but they're really trying to just defraud you with getting some type of, uh, of information out of you. And then I'm asked, hey, by the way, what's skimmers? I mean, this I've never really seen one. How does this all work? And so I've added this section. Uh, so for those that were at the live presentation, this uh, I added this for the evening um, session, but for those that were at the noon, um, this stuff is new, so you'll, you'll, uh, you'll love this stuff. So here is an example of a skimmer. And if you look at it, um, this was actually found in Florida uh, in the middle of the month of February, so about two weeks ago. And if you look at this, this uh, looks, looks ultra thick for a regular uh, credit card reader. And this looks like really bad security tape. So a couple things to keep in mind. If, if the thickness looks off and if look, things look tampered with, just keep your eyes and, and uh, your ears open to this stuff. It, it, it could be bad news, right? And you can always re report things to a gas station attendant. This one's a little tougher because this is actually a snap-on version that goes like on a bank uh, ATM. Um, you can see uh, all the electronics in the back of it and just snaps on to the front. Um, very uh, actually elegant in its design and, and how it all worked. Um, but this was used at a bank that they found. You've seen these type of terminals. Uh, could be in a convenience store. The one on the right is real. The one on the left is fake. And if you look at the one on the right, see the thickness here, both uh, on the reader and on the terminal and, and above here by the, uh, the brand logo. And if you look at the fake one, you can see the reader is a little wider all the way around. This actually can snap on within five seconds. Uh, it just goes right over the top, snaps on, and uh, away they go. So you can see uh, security videos of somebody bumps somebody in the back of the line to create a, a diversion, and then they snap this on, and then they're off and running. So that's another example of a skimmer. It's got the inside guts of it all, where it reads your stuff away from the, uh, the, main, the main device. And then you've got some tamper tape that you look for. Normally you'll see, uh, this is for, particularly for gas stations or even for ATM machines, um, have tamper. I'm using red as an example. Could be any type of color, but red is the most commonly used. On the left, you'll see the four tampering. Just looks like a regular piece of tape. On the right, you'll see things called void or, you know, opened or, you know, used or no good, whatever it is. So if you look for real life, this is in a 7-Eleven. This looks like it hasn't been tampered with, but you can tell somebody opened this using that key here below, and you start seeing void or open come out of here. So if you start seeing these types of things, report it to the uh, attendant. So that's a really quick, uh, I don't know, 
maybe skimmers 101 and how they all work and what to keep a look for. So keep a look for security seals, uh, extra thickness on the terminals or the readers, and um, anything that's looking suspicious, just report it to the attendant, whether it's um, at a gas station or if you're at an ATM, the bank, or if you're an independent ATM, wherever that's located, talk to the attendant that's nearby. So covered the skimmers, but nine cases, uh, lessons learned that we covered earlier on the slide before. You need to proactively manage your password accounts, proactively manage your credit, bank, and insurance accounts, proactively manage your social security number, and really ask your tax repair, doctor, dentist, pharmacist how they handle your information. And if you're not giving, if you're not giving an answer you like, uh, you can push back. Right? Nobody should uh, rough you around because you have to have your social security number. There's lots of ways that they can identify you without using your social security number. I want you to be proactively aware of your surroundings for everyday spending activities. And then be aware of amount of your settings on your smartphone, your social media, online accounts. I'll give you some tips and tricks uh, later on in this presentation about how to do that. But here's what you really learned because you had fake eBay, you had people ripping off your cash, you had people t using your social security number to file a false tax return. Um, you had people that doing everyday spending activities were, were, were grabbing your stuff and then you know, people were being hacked. So be aware of that. You have to you have to get away from, hey, this, isn't gonna, this, this doesn't happen to me, it happens to somebody else. It's going to happen to you. There's just too much going on right now and too much connectedness around the world, uh, whether it's your, your tablet or your, wi you know, your, uh, your Wi-Fi with uh, smartphones, uh, etc. I'll show you all these different things that you need to be on top of and be proactive about how you're protecting your, your information. Speaking of protection, we do have some regular retain, regulatory items that are that are, are taking place. Uh, the first one's um, out of Europe. It's called the European Union De General Data Protection Regulation, or you'll see an acronym called EU GDPR. Um, and essentially what it is, is it's a data privacy regulation that comes out of just the European Union be upset with all the hacks that were happening, whether it was, you know, a, a private hacker, you know, getting into someone's account or just corporate, um, you know, stupidity, to use one term, where they just weren't doing it right. So the, this uh, regulation takes place uh, May 25th of 2018, so it's already in place. It's designed to protect European Union uh, citizens. So anybody that does business in Europe, so this could be people that are headquartered in Europe, or it could be people that aren't but have business over there. So you think of something like Google or Facebook, uh, they're doing those things. Um, and so they want to safeguard European citizens, and uh, essentially they want to make sure that, hey, companies can show you can actually, you know, protect people's information and uh, give you a choice to rectify or revoke consent at ease. And if you're not doing it, all right, you can get fined um, up to uh, was it two, two or four percentage points of your annual sales, which is pretty hefty, so they put some teeth behind it. Um, and they must also alert people of a breach within 72 hours. So you can't be like Facebook, you're like, oh, yeah, about that. Yeah, we, we thought we had it covered. There's going to be none of that. Um, you got to report it within 72 hours. So um, there's people that are fans of this. I think it's I think their hearts are in the right place. It's going to be interesting how it actually um, gets deployed. And you know, the first fine or the first court case about it will be will be really telling on how things go. That's in Europe. Then in California, there's the California Consumer Privacy Act or CCPA. And essentially what that is, is uh, it's similar to the uh, European one, but it also gives you the right to say no to the sale of your information. It gives you the right to sue companies for violations and breaches. And it gives you the right to know who knows your information, why they got it, and how they're using it. Um, so it's meant for California citizens. Um, but if you're doing business in the U.S., um, I used Facebook and Google earlier, or Amazon. Um, if you're doing it around the world, you may just adopt these things and, and make it worldwide. So it wouldn't surprise me if you're a, a citizen of any other state, you'll, you'll probably see this as well. Um, the question I get then is, well, hey, will, will, will the U.S. have a version like the EU does? Uh, right now, there's not anything on the table for that. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if more states take a look at what happened in California and kind of use it as a beta test and how that goes. They may adopt uh, their own version um, along the way. Okay, we're going to transition now from some regulatory stuff to being alert to new ways of how they get your information.
like I mentioned earlier, you can't uh, pretend it doesn't happen. There is no see, hear, or speak no evil. Like you have to be aware. And now that everything's connected, whether it's your phone, whether it's your thermostat, whether it's your fridge, whether it's your car, whether it's your video games, um, everything is connected. So you need to know how to protect it to keep it away from, from hackers and bad actors. So here's a couple of examples. This is from Seattle. This is a uh, mother of um, a couple of kids and living with her significant other. This is happened near Seattle. And she had a Nest device that was in her house. And um, she started feeling like a little uneasy, like she was being watched. And um, she started checking things, and her significant other said, well, you know, don't worry about it, and it kept continuing until she started hearing voices, which started saying some very sexist and racist things. Thankfully, she was uh, quick enough to take out her own smartphone and record uh, what was happening, so she got it on video. Uh, she reported to the police, and they also worked with Nest, and Nest said, hey, we're, we weren't broken into, but your account was hacked. And uh, this is where crooks get a little stupid. Uh, they used his Twitter handle for this and found out the person lives in London. Uh, there's been no press charges. They know who he is, um, and she's changed her passwords to kind of... Um, Make sure that doesn't happen again. But it's a lesson learned for her. It's a lesson learned for all of us that if you have a connected device, make sure you have a very solid password. And I'll show you how to do that. And then make sure you're changing your password very frequently. I'll also show you, give you some tips on how to do that. So that is the first one when they go after your connected devices. I just use Nest. But if you have an Alexa or a Google Home, uh, those come into play as well. Hackers go after gamers and all their devices. So this is an example of Fortnite. Uh, this is a publicly uh, available image from an article from the New York Post. Um, so what makes Fortnite so popular is they have 200 million users, and you can play it across multiple platforms. You can have it on your smartphone, a tablet, uh, your PC, uh, your PlayStation, your Xbox. You can play with buddies or play with someone uh, all around the world. And so with that, there can be fraud, and uh, it got to be so bad that actually Fortnite had to put something on their official Twitter account saying no to scams, there are V-Bucks that are offered only on Fortnite's site on Epic Games. Uh, V-Bucks are starting to be offered through some uh, counterfeit operations, so they had to put that out. But you can imagine if you're a, you're a, a teenager or, or even if you're um, you know, late 20s, uh, you can fall for a scam. So uh, you know, be careful, making sure your, all your devices are, are locked and making sure that uh, you're not falling for... Um, Pardon me, for the scams. Thirteen to keep your eyes and ears aware of for 2019 is neighboring or spoofing. This is where a call comes into you, and um, it's actually a, a bad actor, but it looks like a neighbor. And interesting when, uh, enough, when I uh, gave this presentation, I had a lady raise her hand. She said, you know what, my neighbor just had this. It looked like a number coming from Goodwill. Goodwill is a uh, charity organization. And it turned out to be a, a, a false, false robocall. Uh, and it's, it's, it's happening more and more. And the FCC chairman, his name is Ajit Pai, uh, is really pushing for technology to put an end to caller ID spoofing. And uh, this could actually hopefully happen sooner rather than later. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm going to drink a water here. Uh, sooner rather than later. Um, to put that at end, matter of fact, AT&T is trying out a new one where a call will come in and it'll say AT&T uh, telemarketer alert. Uh, that's happened about three or four times on my phone. So hopefully that works and it gets adopted very quickly. So those are three things to keep an eye on for. Now I'm going to give you some tips and tricks of how to uh, outwit the nitwits. So the first is you have to think of your information uh, as restricted area authorized personnel only so when I, when I when I want you to think about this daily weekly and monthly this is like your new normal right so I want you to get a password manager I want you to have passwords over 12 characters I want you using two-step authentication set up a Google alert for your name make a credit card for your primary spending vehicle review your accounts and statements on a regular basis mind your surroundings and your settings order free credit report every four months, strongly consider credit monitoring service, secure your smart devices, both access and settings, and secure your Wi-Fi, 
and I want you shredding and deleting. So that's a big long list and how we're going to do that. So this is where we're going to get into really the, the nitty gritty and the actionable tools that you can use for everything. So one quick reminder before I get into that is a friendly reminder on passcodes and antivirus systems. So I'm assuming you already know this, but just in case you do, we're level set on this, that you want to be having at least 12 characters. I recommend 14. We're using numbers, letters, and symbols for your passcodes. You can see the difference between the seven characters and 12 characters and how long it takes to actually crack it with uh, brute force. And then for your spyware, I'm assuming that you've got the latest spyware on your computer and antivirus. And if you want to know uh, what are the best ones to use, I don't get into which ones you should use. I think you should compare and choose which one's the best for you. So I give you resources to do that. So I've created a number of different uh, websites that you can go to for this. So this one is tinyurl.com forward slash cf1 dash best dash antivirus. That'll give you the best um, comparison and, con and contrast between um, the different ones that are out in the marketplace. So we're level set on that. So let's get into some of the tools. So the first one is getting a password manager. For those that don't know how that works, you log in on your computer and it actually reads the sites you go to. So you should have a password if you go into Amazon, to Facebook, to Twitter, to whatever social media platforms and ordering platforms you're going to, you should have separate, separate ones for all of those and you should be changing those you know, about every 90 days. So I created a, a website there, tinyurl.com forward slash cf1 dash passwords, which will compare and contrast all the different password managers. There are some for free and there are some where you pay a fee. Um, I personally use the one where you pay a fee and it's worked out really, really well for the past year. Resetting your passwords and codes, like I mentioned before, 12 to 14 characters, uh, a letter, a number, a symbol, etc. Um, and if you're changing them every 90 days, you're going to be in a really good spot. Two-factor authentication, this is where you log in on your computer and then you have um, six digits or 12 digits, however you, the settings you have, to um, give a second validation. I recommend the Google Authenticator. You can use that for your Android or iOS um, for all your different um, accounts you need to get into, which have very valuable information. I want you to set up a Google Alert for your name. Instructions are at tinyurl.com dot com forward slash cf1 dash google dash alert if you're noticing a theme i have cf1 client first there you go uh, for everything and then a dash for the topic at hand and by the way all these uh links i'm going to put in the uh, youtube comment section so you can click on those um if you haven't already like screenshot this already on your on your screen i'll have them down below so you can uh, easily click on those and, and take a look around securing your smartphone you should at, use, at least be using six digits to secure your smartphone. And there's a couple of nuke options at the end that if someone tries to break into your phone uh, five times, it can totally erase. So that information will be there. That's CF1-smart-phone. And then there's also your devices for your home where you have CF1-smart-devices. So this pertains to your, your Wi-Fi, to your um, Alexa or home devices, your tablets, your game stations, Etc. and then also making sure you have the latest antivirus. Securing your Wi-Fi, CF1-secure-Wi-Fi. Have one for yourself, and if you have guests over, I would create a second channel to have an, an easy one for your guests so guests can't get onto your own system and stay on there. Here's how you order your free credit report one every four months. So you go to annualcreditreport.com. There's three credit reporting agencies and you get one free so if you rotate them once every four months you're going to be in great shape so for example Equifax you do in January four months later you do TransUnion four months later you do Experian you just rotate throughout the years uh, and you've got uh, a free credit report uh, every four months then also strongly consider a credit monitoring uh, you can go to CF1-credit-monitoring that'll compare and contrast all the different services out there to kind of stay on top of things and then lastly, to me, this is really interesting. When I ask people how many people have a shredder, I would say only half wrote or raised their hands. So I would, especially with all the different documents you get, you should be shredding. For example, if you get a credit card offer and you just throw it in the garbage, if someone's washing your garbage, pick that up, fill it out with your information because they already know your name and address, um, fill it out, and all of a sudden they got a credit card in your name. You know, we just covered a case where a guy had like 1,600 different credit card numbers on there. So shred everything if you're not using it. 
your bank statements, your insurance statements, the whatever it is, even your utility bill, right? If you're not going to keep it in a safe, then shred it. All right, so that is your handy dandy toolbox to be proactive to make it really hard to break into your stuff. It's a lot there, and some of this may be new, some of this may be maybe not so new, but all the same, you put all these different pieces together, you're going to be very hard to be, uh, to make yourself, you're, pardon me, you're going to be very hard to compromise your, your information. Now, I'm going to get into what I have to do when, when it happens to you. So here we go. Uh, you want to have the Federal Trade Commission contact information, uh, credit agencies contact information, social security contact information, local sheriff, your bank's info, credit card info, United States Postal Inspection Service, because freaky stuff comes through the mail, changing your pins and passcodes, and then report robocalls. So here is your handy dandy contact sheet for when stuff happens. So here's all the information on how to get a hold of the credit agencies, Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. You can see the 800 numbers for each of them and their websites. The Federal Trade Commission has a nice site. It's called identitytheft.gov. You can see their 800 number listed there. You should know your local police. Now, depending on your jurisdiction, uh, you may have a police, you may have sheriff, you may have a uh, state trooper, uh, but know what that is. Have that written down so you know how to call and get a hold of them quickly. Here's the information for Social Security administrators, so those that get benefits from the Social Security, or even those that don't get benefits but something um, unique or weird has happened with your Social Security number. Uh, you got the 800 and, uh, number listed there along with the Inspector General's uh, website. Same thing for the U.S. Treasury, particularly around anything related to your taxes. The 800 number and the Treasury site is listed. Do not call. Uh, this works really well. We had a couple people at our live event um, speak well on how well this worked. We're going to do not call.gov and the 800 number is listed there for any robocall you get. Uh, it's been pretty effective for them. Uh, anything weird in the mail, United States Postal Inspection Service, there's the website link and the 800 number. For those that live in Wisconsin, there is the Department of Agricultural Trade and Consumer Protection. There's the 800 number listed there. So if you think of anything around charities or lotteries or anything related to the state, you've got that information. And then two more things you need to know is your bank information and your credit card information. Those are all usually listed on the back of the card, um, and they're very fast in working to resolve issues, but you shouldn't know that all the same. And so I'll pause there real quick so you can do a screenshot if you want of all this. I'll also have all these sites listed below. And I'm also made a PDF of these tool sheets. So if you want a PDF version of it, you can just email us at my team at clientfirsttaxandwealth.com. So the reason you need all these things, because when it happens, you need to have a recovery plan. And so there's a resource there for you, CF1-ID-recovery-plan. So what happens is you place a fraud alert with the companies you know fraud occurred. Then you're going to place a fraud alert and get your credit reports from the credit reporting agencies. Then you're going to uh, report identity theft to, to the Federal Trade Commission. And then you're going to file a report with your local police department. Those things all together um, constitute an identity theft uh, crime report, and you can use those all together, which makes it a lot easier to um, recover any damages that happen to you, whether financially or otherwise. question I get often is, hey, how does Client First keep my information safe if you're a client of ours? And we've got a, a lot of them. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for all the referrals that you guys give us. So we do use a password manager. We do have two-factor authentication. Uh, we do have antivirus that updates every night. We have 256 encryption on all the information, which is going to take a million years to crack. And then we have all these other compliances, which I'm not going to bore you with, but they're really uh, related to information security and um, service organization organization control practices. So uh, that's SOC 1 and SOC, SOC 2. That should give you a, a flavor for how we keep all your information safe, whether you're an individual or an uh, endowment entity. So I'm going to pause for some common questions that I got. Uh, the first one I get a lot is, uh, how often do I change my passwords? Um, most organizations, when you, where you work for them, whether it's a healthcare organization or a, an industrial organization, um, changing your password every 90 days, we tend to follow that uh, good rule of thumb. Um, 90 days is good. Uh, if it's under that, that's fine too, but if, if you're starting to get a half a year to a year, uh, that's just going to make you more vulnerable. Which password manager do you like? 
Um, like I mentioned before, I really don't get into a specific one, but I want to give you tools where you can, you can compare and contrast the different ones. Um, I will say I use a paid version of that, and it works really, really slick uh, because it'll auto-generate uh, the 12 to 14 different uh, character passcodes that I need, and that remembers them. So when I go onto my Amazon account, or if I go into a social media account, or I go into my own work accounts, uh, it remembers everything. Third one, uh, will the USA have their own version of the uh, EU uh, GDPR? Um, not sure they might. Uh, what it looks like now is they may have uh, their own, uh, states may have their own version, and then maybe it'll come to a federal version. Uh, but right now everyone's watching how the California version will go and see what happens there. Uh, who really needs to see my social security number? Um, you know, dentists, pharmacists, um, a variety of people will ask for it, um, but you don't have to give them your social security number. There's other ways to identify you. Uh, maybe you have your Medicare number. Maybe you have uh, a customer number that they generate with their with their own customer relationship uh, management tool. So you don't necessarily need a social security number. And if you have a doctor or one of their staff that says, "Hey, I have to use your social security number to, to find you," then they don't know what they're doing because there's a lot of ways to figure out who you are and, and your information. Last one is, what about credit freezes? And for those that don't know credit freezes, credit freezes are, um, you call the credit agencies and say, listen, freeze my credit. Do not let anybody open up anything, myself included. Um, and so that, that from that point forward, nothing can be opened. Now, everything that was previously open, maybe you had a mortgage or a car payment, um, that's still in play, but anything new cannot happen um, unless they call you. And then what's, what's been happening is you can open up a 72-hour window uh, if you want to make a car purchase, you want to make a, a home purchase or a land purchase or, or some, some sort of uh, big, big event or if you want to get your uh, background check for employment reasons, um, that's been working out really, really well. We had a number of people talk about that at our live sessions. That's been, been working well. So credit freezes are an option. Don't have to use them, but they're certainly an option for you to use. So those are some of the common questions. If you got more, just put them in the, in the uh comment section or, or email us at my team at clientfirsttaxandwealth.com. So some key takeaways from today. Uh, like I mentioned before, I want you proactively managing your identity and your, and your consumer privacy because it's big business and you need to treat it appropriately. Um, hackers, scammers, fraudsters, and crooks can be across the globe or across your street. I really want you to mind your surroundings and your settings. When it comes to your information, know what you're doing and be confident in your plan. Don't be an easy target. And that's by using the tools. You've got a proactive tool set and a reactive tool set. And they're right here. And there is a PDF version available. So if you just want to email us at my team at clientfirsttaxandwealth.com, you can certainly have that. And I'm also going to put all the websites below um, in the comment section of the YouTube link. So thanks for that. Um, hope it was very helpful and beneficial um, to keep your information safe and away from the hackers and fraudsters. And, and while there's some really crazy stuff going on, uh, in the world, you know, I wanted to give you the tools and resources to really kind of combat that and, and keep you guys safe. So, um, hey, this is from the live version. Hey, keeping us uh, providing your feedback. Uh, we do education once a month. So I did uh, ours in, in February 20th. Uh, we've got Chris Walla, who is in charge of all of our property and casualty. has some really best practices on that. So you can see that schedule there. He'll uh, look at lessons learned from real-life case studies. For those that have already done their taxes, thank you. Uh, we're off to a really hot start with everything. So if you've got friends or family that, that need some help in that area, um, you can check it out. There's the uh, tax prep special. And then we have our true holistic and adaptive programs, uh, really reducing your worry and stress. We realize being a registered independent fiduciary, along with managing our, uh, our funds, um, using our adaptive investment management system makes us unique, not only just in Wisconsin, but actually in America. Uh, it's one of the reasons for our, our fast growth. So we appreciate that for everybody. And uh, the adaptive system isn't just for an individual, it's actually for organizations you care about. Uh, your alma mater, your church, your community of passion. Uh, we've done that for a number of organizations already and, and happy to help you help them in regards to that. So I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks again. If there's anything you need to have a question on, my team at clientfirsttaxandwealth.com is uh, super helpful. Um, if you want to learn more about what we're doing, clientfirsttaxandwealth.com or give us a call, 262-335-1700. So uh, thanks again. You've got all the tools. 
um, to, to combat this stuff, proactive and reactive, use them, uh, keep yourself safe, and um, you guys have a great uh, rest of the week, great rest of the month, and um, go Marquette. See you later.